Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a long time since my last video. Thank you for sticking around. Today, I am going to try and run through all of the games in my collection and give them a quick score out of 10 and just a couple of words about why I like them, why I don't. Um, sorry for the setup, it's pretty difficult to get all of the games in frame. <clears throat> you think I would have upgraded my audio quality by now, but I haven't, so I'm sorry about that. Sorry about the beer in frame as well, and I'm sorry about the hairy leg, but you're just going to have to put up with that for now. And to save a bit of time, let's try and get into it. I don't really know where to start. I've got my trusty tradesman pointer here. Um, maybe we should start. I don't know if you can see this. Up here. Mythic Battles Pantheon. It's also a little bit here, and a little bit here, and a little bit here, and also a little bit here. There's also stuff behind that one. There's probably three of these as well. So it's a big box. And this is, for those who have seen my previous videos will know, this is one of my favorites. I think it was 9 2 of all time. And it's a 10 out of 10 for me. What a game. Best skirmish game I own. If I was going to play a war game, a 1v1 war game, I would pick that nearly every time. Even though it comes in massive boxes and it's hard to set up. Now, moving on. Fireball Island. Pretty cool little kids game. A um, bit too much of a choking hazard for my kids at the moment, so I'm looking forward to them getting a couple of years older and we can play that, but uh, probably seven, seven and a half out of ten, probably, for what it is. Not really an adult's game, but it's good for kids. Gloomhaven. A lot of people know about Gloomhaven. Pretty famous game. Um, uh, eight, maybe. Eight out of ten. I think a lot of people were surprised it wasn't in my top ten, but I don't think it's that good. It's, it's like the, the mechanics of the game are perfect, but I think it's way over the top with components. The map pieces really annoy me having to set up a different map every time and getting all the little doors and swampy pieces and traps and all that set up is it takes a lot of the fun out of the game. Otherwise a brilliant game mechanically, but it annoys me. Batman is an absolute pile of garbage. Um, probably a good game in there somewhere. Really nice components, really nice art. I'm sure that a lot of people do enjoy it, but it is effectively unplayable. Um, trying to get through the rule book and the scenario books, you, you feel like you, need, you deserve a doctorate after you finish that. There's no way I'm playing that again until they redo the rule book. I know that people have done some online and whatever, but it's just not good enough for a game of that size and that price and that scope. It's not good enough, I'm sorry. Monolith, I think it is. Is it Monolith? I don't know. Mythic Games, maybe? I don't know. Whoever it is. Bad. Bad, bad game. Uh, where else should we go? Should we start? Let's keep going over there. So, Terraforming Mars. Uh, most gamers know about Terraforming Mars. Uh, my opinion probably doesn't really matter because everyone else has probably already played it, but I would call it a 7.5. It's okay, the component quality is very ordinary for a game of that price. Uh, mechanically it's fine. I think the card building tableau systems are alright. Um, it takes up a little bit too much space for what it is really. By the time you've finished a game of that, the table the table has been consumed. and Which is not too bad, but I just think for what it is it could have been streamlined a little bit more and the component quality should be better. Uh, clans. Brilliant game. Probably uh, eight, somewhere between eight and eight and a half for me. A bit of a brain burner though, you have to be pretty switched on when you play it. A bit of a mathematics game. Uh, Buck Apollo, I've got the Agents of Venice. I think it's the yeah, Agents of Venice, is that right? Something like that, something about Venice. Expansion, I've got that in there. Brilliant game, brilliant expansion as well. Eight and a half out of ten for me for Marco Polo. I really, really like that. Actually, the more I play Marco Polo, the more I find I like it. So that's always a good sign. I'll always play a game of that. It doesn't go for too long. It's not too difficult to explain. Uh, Mombasa. Uh, famous designer Alexander Fister these days. Um, Mombasa's very, very good game. I'd call it eight out of ten probably. Pretty, pretty tricky, pretty difficult to explain. There's a bit of a bit of an explanation for that one, probably half an hour's worth nearly, if you're explaining it to new inexperienced players, so loses a couple of points for that, but otherwise, brilliant game, I have a lot of fun playing that. Uh, the book tracks are a bit ordinary as well, I think, but otherwise brilliant. Great Western Trail, however, another Alexander Fister game. That is, I think, would that be his most popular? I don't know, Maricado is pretty popular these days, but um, Great Western Trail, probably the highest rated on Board Game Geek, probably in the top 20 still, top 10, maybe? I think that's a 6 out of 10, that game. I think that's 
one of the most difficult games I own to explain. And if you're playing with more than two players, it's going to take you three or four hours to play, and it's just not worth it for what it is. It's okay. It's just, it's just okay. That's all. It's just okay. I would much prefer. Oh, come on, take me. You're going to fail me now. I'd much prefer to play that game, Brass Birmingham. Now that is a fairly new addition to my collection. It's only a couple of months into my collection, that one. And I would give that almost a 10. I think nine and a half to 10. It will be somewhere in there. I probably need to play it more. I've probably played it six or seven times, but I'd like to play it a few more times before I'm certain, but I would say that is close to a 10. That is almost the perfect Euro game for me. I love that the, a lot of people don't love this about it, the separation between the canal era and the rail era the game effectively starting again, but I quite love that because we're pretty time poor with the two kids, so that break in the game allows us to walk away from it for a little while and come back when we have another chance. So for us as a couple, and we mainly play two player games as a couple, Brass Birmingham is one of, if not the best, Uri Ams in this collection. Uh, War of the Ring, I've only played two or three times now. Really, really good game. One of you won war game. Huge, huge rule book, huge rules explanation, and the games go for bloody ever. Um, but it's good. I haven't played it in probably two or three years, but I would love to get it to the table again. I would give that an eight and a half out of ten. Um, very good at what it does. It's not really going to be for everyone. It's probably not even really for me, but it is very, very good at what it does, so you can't really take points away from it. Scythe is probably a nine out of ten for me. Um, some people love it, some people don't. It was big popular Kickstarter game and that's always going to draw a little bit of controversy but um, yeah, brilliant game, it looks amazing on the table, it, it plays really clean, everything that's in the game deserves to be in the game and uh, I haven't got any of the expansions that are saying that so I can't really comment on those but the core game that I have is brilliant, I love it, I've never turned out again to Scythe, I think it's worth all of the hype that it received. Next along, Star Wars Rebellion. Those that know me know that I love Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, it's a 10 out of 10 game for me. I rated it the best game in my collection when I did my last video, probably, I don't know how long ago that was, a year ago, whatever. Um, yeah, I would play that all the time if I could, but it goes for four hours, but it is worth every minute of it. Uh, absolutely love it. Seventh Continent. Uh, I also did a quick little number on that in my top 10. Um, obviously, brilliant game. The wife and I love that. We haven't played it for a little while now, but... Uh, that would be a 9.5 out of 10 for me, I'd say. 7th Continent, I really love the way that game works and the exploration. I haven't found a game like it yet. Battle of Law, uh, I haven't played that for probably four years because of that one. So they're both uh, 1v1 skirmish games. Um, just, I think the table presence of Mythic Battles and the theme of Mythic Battles draws me in. But I did actually quite like Battle Law when I played it. I'd give it a... I don't know, maybe six and a half or something, I don't know. It's difficult for me to judge because I haven't played it for so long. Um, Spirit Island, uh, getting in my top 10 recently, that would be a nine out of 10 for me. Maybe getting close to nine and a half. That's a really, really good production. Great game. Um, it's really not gonna suit everyone because it's pretty difficult to get to the table sometimes, but um, brilliant game. As I've said before, Evolution Climate, I'd give that a seven and a half. Um, sometimes we just really feel like playing that game. I don't know why, it's just, um, it's not amazing, but it is, it's quite clean, it's quite good, artwork's really nice, and it's got a unique playstyle, so I suppose that's why sometimes it draws us in. Any game that's unique in your collection, you'll eventually come to, because sometimes you just crave whatever it is that offers a unique flavour. Rages of the Ganges, I would give that an 8.5, I actually really like that game, I'm surprised that didn't make it into my top 10 actually, it's, it's a brilliant little game. Um, two player, we get through that in about 45 minutes. Doesn't take very long to explain to new players either, and looks really great on the table, except for the, except for the player boards. I think the player boards are a bit crappy, but uh, kind of everything. Um, Orleans, um, I've got the trade. Is it trade and intrigue? The expansion of that trade and intrigue. I think so. I've got the expansion for that. I think it needs the expansion for that. I also think it needs the upgraded. Um, is it me? Is it the meeples? I think you get the meeples, right? Because they upgrade rather than cardboard circles. I think it needs those two things, and then when you have those two things, it becomes an absolutely brilliant game. I would give that an eight to eight and a half as well. Um, one of my favorites. Um, let's go this way. This game at the end here, Suburbia. Another popular game, probably in the top, I don't know, I haven't seen it for a while, but maybe top 50 or 60 on Board Game Geek. 
I think it's pathetic. I actually hate it. It's ugly. It's long. It's mathematical. I think there's too much to keep track of on your board. It sucks the life out of the game and the fun out of the game. Um, and to be really competitive, you have to not only know everything that's going on on your board, but on your opponent's board. And I think it's, for me, it's terrible. I would give that a four, three or four out of ten. I don't know why it's so popular. I think the game next to it, um, the castles and Mad King Ludwig, that's actually the better game. Um, still probably only a six or a seven out of ten, but very similar style. I don't know if it's actually the same designer, but same company. But uh, yeah, similar game, but I would prefer Mad King Ludwig. Uh, a bit more fun for me. Uh, Brewcrafters is quite a neat little game. I haven't seen many people say much about that one for a while, but uh, I would give that seven and a half out of ten. It's quite a neat little uh, Euro game. Um, obviously about brewing beer, collecting ingredients and that sort of thing. I haven't played it in a little while, but I actually really do enjoy that game. So I'd give that a seven and a half out of ten. Arcadia Quest, we haven't played in a long time. Uh, when we did play it, the wife didn't really like it that much. It didn't seem that good for two players, so that's probably why I haven't played it that much. Um, I bought it pretty cheap. It probably didn't really suit our collection, but I, it was on sale, so I bought it, as you do, being a board gamer. And um, it's okay, maybe six out of ten. Uh, Arctic Scavengers, one of the best deck building games I own. Obviously got the uh, expansions in that box as well. So I'd give that one a eight out of 10. I do love playing that one. You need to have probably three or four players to play that one well, um, but it is brilliant. Lord of the Rings card game. Uh, it's only the base box that I own, I think, because the content for that game becomes extremely expensive. Very similar to another game down there. Uh, if you really want to expand on the content and the play time of that game, um, you need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it's just cards at the end of the day. Even if you did spend all that, you'd just have a box of cards. So I haven't really done that, but I do like it. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Jamaica and its expansion in there somewhere. The crew, um, good little easy game, little family game, I suppose. Probably not too bad for kids. Uh, I'd give that a 7 out of 10. I think that one would be a good one once the kids get a couple of years older for them to get into. Galaxy Tracker, another good little game in the collection. I'd give that a 7 out of 10 as well. Um, good little fun game to play, a unique game. Like I said before, it's good to have games that are unique in your collection because when you are looking through to play a game, sometimes it's something with a bit of a unique flavour that will draw your attention. Um, Cyclades, uh, I've played that a couple of times. I have the expansions in there, but I haven't played with them. I think I've got all of the expansions in there. Um, uh, seven and a half out of ten, I'd say, so far. Um, not too bad. Two player, I've played, four player I've played, and they were both pretty good. Um, Inish, one of my favourites. Uh, probably nine and a half, close to a ten out of ten for Inish. I actually really love that game. I wish I had four people to play with more often because I would play that game all the time. Plays pretty quick with four players. I would play it repeatedly uh, in one session if I could. Uh, Wingspan, uh, it's okay. Pretty popular game. It's probably a six out of ten. Um, I only have ever played it two player and I'm pretty grateful for that. I imagine it being pretty dragged out with four waiting for your turn to come around and everyone activating all their bloody birds abilities and crap. I don't know. It's not really appealing for me with more than two players, but with two players it's okay. I wouldn't say it's better than most other games. It's nice looking, but um, yeah. Mexico's pretty cool. I'd give that. Did I give this a score? I don't know, but I did. Anyway, six out of ten. I don't know, does that sound right? Mexica. I would give a 7 out of 10. I quite like this game. It's pretty cool. It's got a really cool like little resin towers and stuff in it. It's kind of like a little game of chess where you're trying to um, score points for zones. Actually, that doesn't sound like chess at all. Why did I use chess as a reference? Anyway, it's it's not really like chess at all. Ignore I said that. And it's a game about uh, building temples and trying to block areas off and collecting points by being in those areas when you block them off. Remember, I haven't played it for a while, but it's cool. It's like a... What would you call that? I don't know. Good description of Mexico. I hope I've sold it to you. Zombicide Black Plague. Um, 6 out of 10. It's alright. It's pretty good at what it does. I think that'll be another good one when the kids get older. Um, for me, it's not really strategic enough. I feel like the pathways to victory are pretty obvious. I don't know what this is up here. Let's just give that a little bit of a push. Get out of here. Get out of here. Sorry about that. Uh, the Others. Another Eric Lane game. I think all three of these? No, that's not an area game, I don't think. He might have been part designer. Anyway, the others, uh, 9 out of 10 for me. Love that game. Uh, I would play that more if I could. Uh, I've talked about that before. 
Blood Rage, uh, one of the first games I got, it was massively hyped when I got into the hobby in 2016 or whatever. I think that might have come out in the same year. Really, really hyped game. I think it's still probably sitting somewhere pretty high in the Board Game Geek ratings. Um, for me, for an 8, I do still really like that game. Dominant Species, I played once. I played my wife. Alright. I don't really want to say it, but uh, I beat her pretty badly and she hasn't wanted to play it again. I think she was a bit sour about that one, but it is brilliant. I love that game. I'll give that close to a 9 as well. It's one of those games that when you're playing it, you, you really appreciate the hobby as a whole because of how beautiful the design of that game is. I know that sounds stupid, but that's just the words that came to mind when I thought about it. Um, Fields of Isle, another really, really good game. Um, they're probably the best two-player like farming simulator style game, which is a pretty common themed game. Um, going around, U Uwe Rosenberg produced it. It's probably his best. I have got the expansion. I haven't played with the expansion yet, but I'd give that eight and a half out of 10. If you're gonna be, uh, if you're gonna play a farming simulator, you probably wanna play that. Snowdonia, um, we've only played this a couple of times. I was waiting for the errata pack to arrive from the original Kickstarter, which it has recently. We just haven't been able to get it to the table with kids around. But uh, from the players that I had, I would give that maybe 7.5, 8 out of 10. The production itself of this deluxe master set is brilliant though. I would give it a good score based on that if I played it more. This has gone for way too long, so I'm going to split this into uh, two videos. Sorry about that, I didn't expect it to go for that long. Some games I talked about more than I probably should, so I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Cheers.